Kyle Larson's crew was furious with Kyle Busch after the two cars collided at the end of Sunday's second stage of the Enjoy Illinois 300. Larson and Bush got into a minor crash at Gateway, and Bush appeared to be bothered by Larson approaching along his side. Bush seems to have pushed Larson down the track, causing both of them to spin out and hit the wall. Larson and his crew firmly blamed Bush, with Larson claiming Bush turned into me. Larson's team was far less courteous than that. Yeah, he fing crowded you down, effing total idiot, the crew responded. Was their anger justified? It's nothing new for Bush, who has offended many of people. Larson, however, seems to be a fan, at least most of the time when he's not involved in it. Larson, however, had the last laugh in this event. He met the minimal speed and was able to continue. Bush didn't and was finished for the day. It's safe to say that Kyle Busch's 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season has not been ideal. He was 14th in points heading into Sunday's, June 2nd, Enjoy Illinois 300 at Worldwide Technology Raceway, with two top fives and five top ten finishes. The previous two races saw him finish on the lead lap but battle for the most of the day. The weekend in Illinois appeared to be going well at first, but he was disappointed to qualify 10th. In his post-qualifying bullpen session, he was brief and gruff, claiming that he had no grip in his number 8 car no matter what his team tried to do. With the full reversal in weather conditions on Sunday, Bush had the opposite dilemma. He was now incredibly loose, but he attempted to deal with it as best he could. Bush was in a position to score some crucial points on Stage 2 Sunday as he battled Kyle Larson for 6th place. The two drivers made contact on the front stretch. Then, calamity struck in Turn 1. Bush's car suffered serious damage as a result of the squeeze play into the wall. The two-time Cup Champions Day ended when he drove it back to the pits. Meanwhile, Larson kept racing despite rear-end damage, finally finishing 10th. Bush was unhappy with Larson later, but he did not openly confront him. It looked like Larson got loose, I guess, Bush said outside the infield care center. He was on older tires and trying to get us for a spot. Not sure what a single point was going to mean for him, but it certainly hurt us a lot. Given the pit strategy used during the last stage of the race on Sunday, he had a chance for a solid finish. Bush was using the same strategy as race winner Austin Sindrick. He last pitted on lap 114, during a yellow for Josh Berry's collision. I'm sure it's my fault, Bush sarcastically stated, but hate it for my guys, we can't afford days like this, you know, just hate it for them, and trying to race for a playoff spot and gradually fall in there a little bit. Just, yeah, he got loose and wiped us out. His most recent victory came at Gateway, his third in 2023, although it was his last of the season, and he has yet to win in 2024. It's very frustrating, Bush explained. We cannot afford days like that. The number 8 Rebel Bourbon Camaro was not as good as it had been previous year, but it was still a top 10 vehicle, and we planned to finish there. We are not going to finish at all. It was his first DNF of the season, and he will return to Sonoma next week determined to keep his streak alive. Bush would most likely have stayed out for the stage caution, which would have occurred regardless of the collision. As a result, he would have started fourth, below all three Team Penske Fords. From there, he would have had to stick to his strategy, avoid fuel troubles, and finish strong. The outcome may have been a place in the top five. Instead, Bush's collision on Sunday pushed him to 17th in the standings. He is 20 points behind Boucher with 11 races left in the regular season. Boucher also has the tiebreaker against Bush because to his two second place finishes. There is time to make up that difference, but jumping over three drivers is not an easy task. That also assumes that there are no more new winners who are out of playoff contention on points. Will Bush be able to reach the playoffs without any further crashes? The weekend ended bad for Bush, but okay for Larson. And it started even better for Larson as NASCAR gave Kyle Larson the waiver he needed to compete in this year's playoffs, despite skipping the Coca-Cola 600 to run the Indianapolis 500. The decision followed nearly nine days of internal NASCAR debate over whether Larson should be penalized for staying in Indianapolis, where rain delayed the May 26th race by four hours. That meant Larson had no chance of returning to Charlotte in time to start the Coca-Cola 600. But it was always his intention to compete at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and Larson did make it to the track, only to have the race cancelled due to rain before he could complete a lap in his number 5 Chevrolet. This was without a doubt uncharted waters. In the past, those waivers had been given mostly for medical reasons or for drivers suspended from our event, and those waivers were granted fairly quickly, said Elton Sawyer, NASCAR Senior Vice President of Competition. This one was unprecedented in that we had a driver miss one of our races, one of our cup championship events, to be at another event. That's why it took as long as it did. 
The time we took, which was a week, was exactly the right time we needed to make the decision. Larson appeared to respond to the waiver by posting an image on social media showing him giving the thumbs up. Larson, who has two victories this season and is automatically qualifying for the playoffs, had his Cup Series standings changed during Sunday's race outside St. Louis. Despite being second in the overall rankings, he had lost all of his playoff points. The playoff points were restored to Tuesday's standings. To not have Kyle Larson in our playoff and give our fans the opportunity, the chance to him race for a championship, at the end of the day, that didn't feel that was the right decision for us to make," Sawyer explained. All of Hendrick Motorsports was in continuous touch with NASCAR and believed there was no problem as long as Larson returned to race in the 600. According to Sawyer, no one at Hendrick was ever guaranteed a waiver if Larson did not qualify for the NASCAR event. Sawyer said that everything was on the table as authorities considered the best ways to proceed, which could have included penalizing Larson for skipping a Cup Series race. But if you look at the rule book, he said, the two options were granted or not to grant it, and anything in between that or outside of that would have been us digging deep into the rule book to do something that just didn't feel right. His decision to miss the Coke 600 may have lost him 23 possible playoff points, 15 if he does not win the regular season championship, and 8 from the Coke 600. Time will tell if those potential 23 points that were on the table that they didn't get, how that will unfold as we go through the playoffs," Sawyer stated. So there was a point penalty for him, and we don't feel like from our side that any other additional penalty or any type of asterisk beside it would have been the right way moving forward. NASCAR executives also want drivers to continue attempting and completing the Indy Charlotte double, Larson or not. Obviously, the Coke 600 is a huge race for us as well, Sawyer stated. But if we look in motorsports in general, the Indy 500 is a big event. We embrace the double. We believe it's fantastic. We want to see other drivers have that opportunity. So we have to just make sure that we're looking out, first and foremost, for the fans that again buy the ticket that were here in Charlotte. And it felt like Kyle and the team gave every effort to be able to get here. He was ready to go and had his helmet on. And unfortunately, we were not able to get going and get him back in the car. I know it's a little bit of a cliche, but every situation is different and I feel like that we had the parameters in our rule book and the team here at the R&D Center to ultimately make the best decision, and that's what we were hired to do. Larson was the sixth driver in history to try both the Indianapolis 500 and the Coca-Cola 600 on the same day. In 2001, only Tony Stewart finished the whole 1,100 kilometers. There is worry that NASCAR's strong attitude would discourage drivers from attempting the feat in the future. Larson has a two-year commitment with Aero McLaren and Hendrick to return to Indy in 2025, but it's unclear whether NASCAR's protracted discussions will change those plans. Will there be more drivers to try the double in the upcoming years? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.